Good afternoon and welcome back to America's Workforce, broadcast from Ohio for workers around the entire world. And don't forget, we archive everything on awfradio.com. Let's go to uh, line number two. Welcome back to the show. Mr. Dan Deverna. Dan is a registered representative and investment advisor representative offering securities and investment advisory services solely through the Emeritus Investment Corp. AIC is a registered broker-dealer member, FINRA, SIPC, and a registered investment advisor. By the way, AIC is not affiliated with Creative Financial Partners. Additional products and services may be available through Daniel Deverna or Creative Financial Partners that are not offered through AIC. Representatives of AIC do not provide tax or legal advice, so please consult your tax advisor or attorney regarding your circumstances. Let's go to our live line. Welcome back to the show, Mr. DeVerna. Hey, Dan, welcome back to the broadcast. Thank you, sir. Good to be here. And before we forget, we got to mention your book here. Today we're going to talk about when can I retire. And just about everything that we talk about on these segments with you is contained in your book, Retirement is Just the Beginning, The Union Worker's Guide to Constructing a Retirement Strategy. And let me ask you real quick, uh, did this just come out? How do people get a copy of this book for their own use? Yeah, so I'll give you a little background on it. So I was a union guy. Yeah. Uh, my dad's a union guy. Uh, my dad's now a retired union guy. And I've I've been in the financial services for a bit now, but uh, Cooper Tire put me through school. I was union there, and they, they paid for me to go to college. And when I got done, I realized how underserved the union market is. And so there's so many moving parts and so many things. So I've really spent a lot of time, really most of my time in the last 20 years working with, with union folks, and we realized there, the information that I kind of had gathered over the last 20 years could help some people. So last year, uh, sat down with, a, with some help of some other talented writers, because I don't really write very well myself. Um, and they took my words and put it on paper and had it make sense and spelled it right and stuff. So I uh, did that about a year ago, and if you're looking to locate the book, you can find it at uh, dandiverna.com, or it's on Amazon. You can buy it there, too. But it, it really is meant to fill in some of the blanks for people that maybe want to do things themselves, or if you realize how many things there are and you think, boy, that's a little overwhelming, then maybe you, you take the book and it, it's a good tool with ref, to reference with your financial advisor or if you're looking for one. And, and uh, we do a lot of work here in Ohio with, with financial uh, on the financial side for lots of unions and lots of union folks. So that's an option, too. Well, it is a quick read. It's real easy. It's laid out. It's just over 100 pages. Again, the title is Retirement is is Just the Beginning, the Union Worker's Guide to Constructing a Retirement Strategy. All right, let's talk about the time that I can retire. What are the important ages or timing factors, Dan? Yeah, so I think, and this is plan-specific, the first part, but depending upon when your union gives you access to your pension, and also, so if you qualify, like here, the local 50 here is, is I think, uh, you know, they get have to get their 90. They have to get their numbers in. And so, but there's a lot of different situations um, where you can have access to these funds, maybe as early as age 55. And then you have the, the magic number, which is kind of for everybody, and that's that 59 and a half number. And that says you can access... 401ks and IRAs and Roth IRAs and and qualified money like that, you can access those funds at 59 and a half. So that's a very important age. The next important age would be uh, when you can reach Social Security, which for most of of the people that are in that age group is is about 62 years old, but they're moving that back a little bit. Mm -hmm. And um, and and so understanding on the the younger side. If you're going to retire before any of these ages, you have to kind of bridge the gap. You have to have enough means 
from some source to be able to get yourself to that full retirement age where you have access to all the funds and all the tools that have been kind of set aside for you as you as you went through your your working years. Mm-hmm. I have to ask you this. I don't know if you know the answer to it, but what, what's with the fifty nine and a half? Why, why couldn't they pick fifty nine or sixty? What, what's with the half year in there? Well, this is a government decision. Oh, okay. You know what? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'll tell you, like, there's just not that many things that are really logical. I'll tell you the other age that people – now, this age really gets people uh, upset a lot, and that is – and this is further off, but at 70 and a half, if you haven't been taking money out of these plans, they make you. And the purpose behind that, as you might imagine – is Uncle Sugar, our, our our government here, saying, hey, we have not yet gotten any money from you. Yeah. And so these dollars have been accumulating tax-free all this time. It's time to, for us to get our cut. There you go. And so at 70 and a half, even those people that don't have a need for taking the money, they absolutely have to start taking money out. And so that's yet another age that becomes important for a whole different set of issues. Right, right. That half year keeps popping up. You got 59 and a half and then 70, yep. 70 and a half. Absolutely. All right. Yep. Okay, next question. How much money, and this is a biggie, how much money do I need to have saved for retirement? So I, I think this is a, I would call this a cute question because you see these commercials you know, and they say you have to have this much money, and and they show a path. You know, and they tell you, oh, you know, you got to have a a million bucks, or you got to have two million bucks, or you got to have. Everybody's different, oh. and and one of the neatest things that I'm so happy when we started our our office here, we started in 2005. I've been doing this since the late 90s, but uh, we never really felt like everybody should have the same deal because everybody's so different. I mean, we have tons of clients that are union folks, and they're getting pensions. And then there's a lot of our our people that work in other places or other areas of life, and they don't get pensions anymore. And you know there's less and less pensions today than there were five years ago mm-hmm. than there were 25 years ago and absolutely far more than there were 40 years ago you know the guys like my grandpa who now has been retired longer than he worked for the union he was a part of those days we're going to see less and less people in those types of situations but he's been getting a pension a uh, pension check for them from them for 34 years there you go he's 94 years old so um, I think it's interesting, uh, really, the, the other elements of how much money you need besides what income sources you have is also obviously lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. We have a lot of people with paid off houses, and then we have a lot of people that have fantastic big houses because they want to have the grandkids come back and mm-hmm. the kids and everybody have a place for everybody. And then some people are, are just sitting on the back porch uh, smoking cigars, and then <laughs> others are going down to Florida all the time. So right. depending upon what your lifestyle is, uh, we really think that the dollar amount that you have saved, it just needs to kind of blend in, and that's where we do some real planning. Yeah, yeah. There, there's no simple answer to that question. It, it depends on the individual. And what you yeah. point out, too, about the uh, the 90-year-old, the 90-plus year, you're talking about a defined benefit plan. You don't see too many of those. You see them in, the, in government. But you don't see yep. too many in the private sector. And, yeah, that is a pension for life. And you live right. up to 100 years. And that's exactly why the companies are not doing this, because people are living longer. They they, right. they don't want to get stuck with those obligations. Yep. Um, when you explain it that way, you realize the math just doesn't work. Mm-hmm. I mean, we just don't have ha, – We the, it's not really sustainable because the, the agenda with those dollars was really they had to make a pretty – great rate of return and that just hasn't happened no 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 not at all okay one more question here how do i get my money out of my 401k or retirement plan say you're ready for retirement what's what's the process here yeah so it's a it's a pretty simple process i mean it's really simple for us if somebody's doing it on their own it can be fairly simple also the thing that you really have to work around and it depends again on your plan but with most 401ks they don't write little checks they write big ones 
So if you've been in this accumulation tool of a 401k your entire career and you've been putting money in every week and now all of a sudden it's time to retire and you've got, well, I don't know, you've got a 100,000 bucks in there or 200,000 or half a million or a million or whatever it is and you call them up and say, hey, I'd really like to start getting money out of there, they're going to tell you, well, you got to have an IRA to do that. We don't do that. We're part of the accumulation tool. So what most people do is they'll roll money from their 401k out to a traditional IRA, and then they'll connect the plumbing. As this is just my terminology. Uh, connect the plumbing so that much like the rest of their life is gone, they will have money shows up in their checking account on the first of the month, and the taxes have been withheld. And you know that that type of a situation. So after that initial transition, it's actually a probably quite a bit like life has been all this time in the accumulation phase, except instead of putting more money into this, now we've kind of flipped flipped the script here, and now we're taking money out. But it's a, a fairly simple transition. And, and one of the things I'll just tell people that are doing this on their own, don't expect to have the dollar amounts figured out on the first day. Mm-hmm. Like it's really tough to, to know exactly how much money you're going to spend on a monthly basis. Everything is changing in your life. I mean, the amount of miles you drive in your car, the amount of gas you use. Some people have work trucks and now they're not going to. I mean, the the, the lifestyle is going to be absolutely very different. So you want to make sure that you're putting yourself in a position where you have some flexibility. And if that number's not right the first time, that's okay. Mm-hmm. Like you can move it up or down accordingly. Yeah, yeah. You got some flexibility there. That's good. All right. Well, we're just about out of time. And uh, what we're going to do right now is promote next month. And this is a really, really important topic, and it's about long-term care and life insurance. I mentioned a couple of minutes ago about people living longer, but are you living better? That's how a lot of people ending up in nursing homes. Are you ready for that aspect of your life? We'll do that next. Does that sound okay? Perfect. Very good. Daniel Daverna, Creative Financial Partners, thank you so much. We will talk to you next month. Great. Dan DeVerna on behalf of Creative Financial Partners out of Sandusky website is dandaverna.com. That's it for another edition of America's Workforce. Coming up tomorrow, we have our segment with John Russo and Working Class Perspectives and Leo Gerard on behalf of the Steelworkers. Until then, all of you have a wonderful day. <laughs>